Do you know your chemicals? Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is the DIY Detail Podcast. We're into detailing. Detailing is not just water anymore. There's chemicals involved. Water is a pretty powerful cleaner, actually. It actually is. It is a solvent. Uh, you know, when we think about the power of water, all we have to do is look at the Grand Canyon. It sort of carved that thing out just with water. There's no chemicals involved. Or look at your hood from water spots. Exactly. I mean, it's a combination of a lot going on. But we wanted to have a conversation about chemistry, chemicals, and just like what advice we have as detailers for the armchair chemists out there, yeah. some of whom have a lot of information at their disposal and can learn this stuff really good, and some of whom uh, are maybe a little bit out of their league, I would say myself included, when it comes to uh, deciding that they know better than the chemist on how to use products. Right. So this is not a preachy thing. This is, we know y'all are doing it out there. Yeah. I'm gonna combine my iron remover with my all-purpose cleaner with a little bit of <laughs> tire shine for God knows what. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But people are like, I think I figured this out, right? Right. And that's not how the, the chemists put together car cleaning chemicals, do they? No, not at all. Now, one of the things that I wanted to touch on, a bit what Nick said there is, don't be mixing without knowing what's in there. You could cause a very bad chemical reaction, and it may not be one that you're aware of, but down the road, it could be something that you mix chemical A with chemical B, it creates chemical C, and chemical C could be very no nauseous to your health. It could be cancer engine, most things are. But anyways, uh, we diverse there. But it could be damaging your paint without you knowing it. It could, at that moment, look great, but eventually, it, that could be causing damage. Some people like to combine cleaners, like uh, all clean and incredible suds, and that, I mean, I'm not a chemist, but we've done that before on our videos. Like, that works. Right, and if we combine chemicals in videos like that, it's because we've done the research and we know we can combine them. So, in, you know, one thing, you mentioned incredible suds. Try mixing quick beads with it. You'll see what happens. You actually take the beading away. It actually changes the whole dynamic of both products. So, you know, that's something, if you want to try it, you're going to have to live with the results. But one thing we all have at our disposition, and you're listening to this, you're watching this, that means you have internet. The internet is an amazing tool, and you Google any chemical, it will take you generally to Wikipedia. In Wikipedia, free online resource, it is amazing, the knowledge that's on there. And it's edited daily, so it's updated. And as chemicals change, those updates happen as well. But what Wikipedia can do is you take the SDS sheet, and for our SDS sheets, they're very available. Every box, every bottle has a QR code that takes you to a website. That website is DIYDetail.com. While you're there, it brings you to a landing page that isn't available when you're searching on the website. Yeah, it sends you to a link tree with right. SDS sheets, how-to videos, and then restock supplies, which is our website. Exactly. So one of those is the SDS sheets, and we have PDFs of each chemical on there. Yeah. So if you're curious about that, uh, you can go there. But I know you mentioned Incredible Suds. Yeah. And it's an amazing car wash shampoo. It is. And we went to the chemist, and we said, here's what we want, and it turns out that not using the cheap ingredients, so a very expensive formula, it was an expensive, difficult formula to formulate. Exactly. Formula to formulate. But we put the effort into it by saying to our chemist, hey, figure this out, right? Yeah, like, he likes a challenge. But yeah, but like there are all these chemical, like the point is you can learn this stuff. You don't need us to tell you, ah, don't do it, right? But there are chemists who know quite a bit about this. Yeah. Um, now, not all car cleaning chemicals are created equal. So I think no. people get frustrated that, that the chemical they have in their hands maybe isn't meeting their needs, and that's when they start to get creative with it. Yeah. Um, and I think that's on us as a company and the industry to, to keep innovating, right? To right. Like deliver the products that people really need. Yeah, and while you're at that SDS sheet, you have the chemical name, but there's the CAS number. That's what you're after when you're looking at an SDS sheet. Type in that SDS, or that CAS number, onto Google, it will take you to a Wikipedia page, and you can learn all about that chemical. But then, a lot of these things have different chemicals in them. And when you mix chemical A with chemical B, it might completely transform into chemical C, and the first two components are gone. Like when you mix water and jello. Well, you end up 
they're too, you know, you mix the powder with a liquid and you end up with a gelatin. You end up with a great dessert. So that is something that you need to be mindful of. When you're mixing A with B, you may be doing a really weird chemical reaction. And so looking up those SDS sheets, the CAS numbers, you can read, if you read far enough into all of this, you can determine what's happening. But that being said, trust the chemistry that we're providing you. Like Nick mentioned, the incredible suds. Yes, it has a pH of eight and a half. And everybody is, I want a pH neutral soap because my coating manufacturer told me I needed a pH neutral soap. First of all, if you have a real ceramic coating on your car, you could use incredible, or you could use all clean as your daily cleaner. It wouldn't damage the, uh, the ceramic coating. Ceramic coatings are sold for the chemical resistance and they're telling you you need a pH neutral soap. Someone didn't study their chemistry. Well, you mentioned all clean. Right. And once we did water spot remover on a hood. Right. And uh, we did it without a ton of water. So we right. were just addressing water spots for a test spot. Yeah. And we used the water spot remover. We sprayed some on. Yeah. And then we rubbed gently. I don't know if we had a wet towel or not. Uh, or a uh, rinseless dampened towel. Rinseless dampened towel. But water spot remover is on the acidic side, so low pH. Right. And I was like, well, I'm not sure how to do this final wipe. And you said grab all clean because it will neutralize the pH. And I'm like, what are right. you talking about? I think it was maybe like leaving a streak. Yeah. We hadn't washed the vehicle at all. Exactly. Yeah. We, uh, there's no pressure washer involved. I just wanted to do a clean wipe and, and get this thing looking good again. And the all clean worked. And right. it blew my mind. I'm like, why would all clean, which if anything is maybe going to leave a streak or smear on paint when you're not involved in a hose, right? Like yeah. this is our all purpose cleaner. Why would it be all clean? But it neutralized the low pH, right? Exactly. So like, these are good things to know. If you want to play amateur chemist in the field, in the detail, in that moment, yeah. some basic knowledge about pH can be helpful. Oh, definitely. Like with carpet cleaning, you can use all clean on some soiled carpets. However, ideally, since I went to carpet cleaning school, I know very basic detail that I'm not the chemist, but you want to leave your carpet at a neutral pH. So you would, right. uh, you would extract it hopefully and remove a lot of that all clean residue and hopefully it'd be close to neutral, but you're gonna leave some residue behind. So you know, in carpet cleaning technician school, they, they're like, use an acid based rinse after your alkaline pre-spray. But the whole idea is you want a neutral pH in your carpet when you're done. Right. Um, but we're talking about paint here. It's just, there are some things that are very easy to kind of understand. Right. And other things that are rabbit hole. Yeah, and you know, rabbit hole, we'll let, Nick really likes the carpet rabbit hole, so we'll let him go down that one a little further. There are some things that, you know, st certain stains on carpet, you put all clean on it, and you've locked that stain in for life. Really? Yeah. That's so, interesting. Right. I mean, I know that that's possible. Right. I know it's possible, but I, I don't want to scare people away from trying all clean. No, you don't want to do that. But whenever you're dealing with an interior, so interiors and chemicals, there's a lot of people that the first thing they do, they get out the sledgehammer, they use all clean, and yes, it cleans. But they could have done it easily with interior cleaner protect or the rinseless wash. So you don't need to necessarily go after that harshest chemical. Start with the most gentle way of cleaning first, and you'd be surprised how well it cleans. The rinseless wash is a great case in point. People think, oh, it's pH neutral. PH of eight, so close enough to neutral. PH of eight, it's not gonna clean anything. Well, there are some surfactant-based all-purpose cleaners that have a PH of 13 out there that don't clean as well. Because the chemistry is not only about the PH level, but it's also about the quality of the ingredients. And you can have a surfactant that is hyperactive and does a great job with a PH of eight, and then you have a really cheap surfactant with a PH of 12 or 13, that basically all it's doing is burning stuff. Now, one interesting fact, we're talking about pH levels, right? Hydrofluoric acid, pH of two, two and a half, somewhere in there. Would you drink that? No. No, Coca-Cola, pH of 2.2, I think. People drink it all the time. So pH does not necessarily mm. mean strength of work involved. And in an age where institutions and trust for them is very low. Right. I'm very cognizant of that as I say, find a brand or a couple of products that you, like. that you trust. Yeah. And just hopefully you trust it because it actually works, right? Right. So try stuff out, but when you find something that works then you can trust, 
just kind of lean on it. It's nice to use your critical mind in the moment. I think that's actually a crucial part of life and detailing. But it's easy to keep trying to find the new, latest, greatest thing. Right. Like if, if stuff works for you, just build some loyalty and trust around it. Like yeah. in carpet cleaning, there are a couple of chemicals that I, I found just from janitorial world. Those have worked great for years, right? Exactly. And so if you need a deep dive on carpets with hot water extraction and, and neutralizing rinse and everything, I've even interviewed the chemist in Salt Lake City of these products. Right. He told me all about the dynamics that have nothing to do with pH. Most of it just, when it, I did a whole video about it. I've heard it 10 times. I just know this stuff works, right? Yeah, exactly. And same with our lineup. Like, the stuff just works. It works. It works well. It works safely as well. So that's an, you know, a very key point is safety. You can have a very, very caustic, dangerous, you know, either acidic or caustic chemical that will rip a hole through your hand if you leave it long enough, yet people are out there using it daily on cars. I just like wearing gloves when I'm yeah. detailing cars. I know you don't always do that out there, folks, but uh, you know, I respect that these chemicals do a great job on cars, right. which are exposed to the harshness of our roads and et cetera, et cetera, so on and so yeah. forth. Um, in terms of chemistry, like what else do you hear people ask about that, that isn't something we want to dismiss as like, oh, you're not a PhD chemist, you don't deserve to know, that, that you think like generally people are curious about that you get questions about all the time that you think is worth talking about? Well, the pH level is a big one. We get asked, is it pH neutral? Yeah, it's pH neutral soap. Is it safe right. on my car, my ceramic coating, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And pH neutral is from five to nine, so in that area. Uh, little known fact, or maybe known, but we're in Omaha, Nebraska. The water here has a higher pH level than our soap. Because drinking water, you can go up to a pH of nine. Our soap is eight and a half. Here, the pH, we tested it, it's nine. Uh, so it's very high pH. So we're actually raising the pH of our soap when we're here in Omaha. It's very minimal and that's not a, a big deal. Some people think drinking an alkaline or pH, high pH water is good for them. So if you like that, move to Omaha. <laughs> uh, with that said, people put a little too much thought and they overthink stuff too often. Mm. Uh, like the ceramic coating. Oh, I need a pH neutral soap. Your ceramic coating is sold to you, advertised as chemically resistant. And then the company is saying, oh no, you need to use this special soap and you need to use this special thing and this special thing. In reality, your paint that's not protected needs all those special things. The ceramic coating, if it can't stand up to a basic chemical, then it's not really that good of a ceramic coating. And even a good sealant. Yeah. Like ceramic gloss. You're not gonna break down ceramic gloss if it's been applied with one foaming of all clean and letting it dwell on the paint. Right. All clean's a very strong all-purpose cleaner. It's not gonna break it down just like that. No. Like it, over time, things can wear down. I can't measure yeah. how much ceramic gloss got degraded by that, but I think the reality is when people ask, I wanna ceramic coat my car with your coating, right? Right. And two years ago, I applied X brand this or Y brand that. Yeah. Or six months ago, I applied and I'm like, the only way you know if it's off is if you give it a polish. Right. And if it's not off, even after a polish, it's still going to be a good durability in terms of the coating, right, Ivan? Right, because what you're doing is you're polishing, you're slightly abrading, now the new coating has something to grab onto. A good ceramic coating actually doesn't sit on the surface, it actually goes into the paint. Your paint is very porous. It looks like a sponge when you look at it through a, a very powerful microscope. So, so wait, so uh, if the coating though underneath it um, isn't gone after you've polished. So I recommend Joe uh, do a light one-step polish on his paint yeah. and then apply our coating. If whatever was there before isn't gone and it goes on top of that, what if that is not super durable still? What if that's on its last legs? Well, the and light- this is where I'm curious, like, because yeah. we want to know this stuff. We, we want to know the chemistry at a basic level, right. even though it's quite complex. Yeah, so the polishing, what it does is it removes the oxidation so anything that is a loose particle. So we've clayed it, we've done all that, but there's always a bit of oxidation. We've removed that oxidation just with a light polish. And we've also abraded the surface. To our eyes, when we polish, it looks like, wow, super smooth. 
In reality, when we're polishing, we're taking very, very fine abrasives and scoring the surface. That scoring is more than enough for the new coating to grab on, even if there's an existing coating there. Now, if you try to put a coating over a coating without abrading it, without that polishing, eh, you may not get great results. And there's one other myth I'd like to dispel here, and it's something I read over and over and over again, is that dish soap removes waxes, sealants, ceramic coatings, you name it. Dish soap doesn't do any of that. Dish soap, if you listen to the commercials of most dish soaps, they have sheeting action. And that sheeting action is, you've got that beautiful wine glass that you've taken out of your water, you rinse it off, you don't want water spots on it. So what happens? It sheets the water. It leaves the water on the surface in this sheet. And it's not sheeting like we like to see in detailing, where you put water in a large volume and low pressure, and all the water just goes off and it dries. That's what we like, what we call sheeting. But a sheeting action in the dishwashing world is we're leaving a film of water on there that when it evaporates, it all goes away together. And when you wash your car with a dish soap, which you shouldn't do anyways, it's not a great soap, it doesn't have a lot of lubrication. Yes, if you're cleaning a duct that's been in an oil spill, great stuff. But what's happening is you're leaving a layer, that sheeting action, you're actually leaving a layer of soap on the paint. And that layer of soap, bingo looks like you've removed the wax, removed the coating, the sealant, whatever. All you're doing is you put a layer on top of it. The next time you wash it, if you wash it with a good aut automotive soap, guess what? Your beading is gonna come back. And it's not because of the soap, it's because you've removed the dish soap. So Dawn dish soap is not a uh, soap that should be in a detailing uh, garage? No way, shape, or form. Keep it in the dishwasher, keep yeah. it in the kitchen. And you know, like I say, there's some people that swear up and down that it removes wax. It doesn't remove anything, it actually leaves something behind which hides the effect of the wax. So chemistry, detailing, there's a lot more to unpack here. Yeah. But we've hired a chemist that we pay well. Yes. Who works on unique formulations for us. Uh, I know him, we've talked to him, we've worked with him, like I trust yeah. this guy and that's, that's where I put my trust, and we hope, since this is our livelihood, that yeah. you then will trust us with the performance of the products that you've used so far. So let us know what questions you have uh, about our product line. Let us know if you have more questions for Ivan. Sometimes you're the perfect one to answer them, uh, but I do my best as well. So with that, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave those questions below, and we'll see you in the next one.